This is a rotisserie chicken. It costs $4.99 at Costco. And here in the Netherlands, it's sold at local markets like this one. Just some guys spinning, waiting for me to devour them. And from one single chicken, I managed to make four portions of chicken salad, two chicken wraps, two portions of chicken stew, and a delicious chicken stock. But how did I do it, you might ask? All right, let's get to work. So first I will cut these things. Oh my God, they tied up this whole thing full of chicken grease already. Okay, first thing we will do is take off this breast, this white meat. So I'll just cut like this. You can also use your hands, it doesn't really matter. Also, you can take off the skin and it's actually really useful to keep this on the side and put anything that's not meat in here like bones, cartilage, skin. Oh yeah, I have to sneeze. Come on, try geminal nerve. Oh, that sucks. I know using your hands and everything is kind of a gross process, but eventually you should be left with a bowl full of white meat. Look at this bone. It looks like a logo on a car. This chicken sponsored by Volvo. I just want to say this video was definitely inspired by Matt from Moro Cooks. So shout out to Matt from Moro Cooks. Go, go follow him. But now let's move on to the dark, dark meat. The dark meat has way more flavor because it has more fat. But because of all that fat, it's kind of yucky when it's cold, to be honest. But fortunately, it tastes very good when reheated and it doesn't become dry like chicken breast, for example. This leftover chicken carcass, keep it along with all the other bones. So this is exactly what we're looking for. The white meat, the dark meat, and all the bones and leftovers. Let's start with this one. So all this stuff, bones, cartilage, skin that you would normally maybe throw away actually is the secret to make the best chicken stock of all time, maybe. So just dump all that stuff in a Dutch oven or a big pot along with any leftover vegetables of your choosing. I like root vegetables a lot like carrot and parsnip, some bay leaves even though I'm pretty sure they don't do anything. And now just top it with your freshest water, Stuart. <laughs> Who's Stuart? And we're gonna let this simmer for, I don't know, an hour, two hours. To be honest, I have no idea just until it looks right. One hour and a half past. And I think it's done. Now this thing is straight liquid gold, guys. I don't invest in stocks, but if I did, I'd buy this chicken stock. Mm. All right, we're gonna strain it. Can already tell I'm gonna mess up. A lot of the stock just overflowed. How do, I don't know how to do this. Now, of course, there's no salt in this yet. Whenever you use this for dishes, that's when you add the salt. Let this cool down, put it in your fridge, use it for soups, stews, sauces. For all I care, you can put that hot stock in a thermos and sip it in the gym. Now let's move on to this white meat, which is uh, mainly the breast, not mainly the press. <laughs> and this thing is pretty good cold, like even just like this. Good. Or even better, you make some chicken salad. And for chicken salad, we need to shred this chicken. And you may want to take two forks and do this stuff. But here we do things a little bit differently. Get shredded chicken. This chicken is more shredded than Jason Mamoa. All right, we have some low-fat Greek yogurt, some mayo, but not too much. Shout out to QP Mayo, the best mayo out there. We're also gonna take some beetroot. It's already cooked that uh, you definitely didn't purchase from the grocery store because you're too lazy to make it yourself. Oh, why did I do that? Why am I picking it up with my hands? No! To add to the pink theme, I have some cranberries. Probably should have chopped them, but I forgot. And now it's too late. Chop some chives. Chop some chives in this place bunch of salt and a touch of olive oil. And as you can see, it's turning a nice pink. It's it's a Barbie chicken salad, yay! Let's taste to see if it's enough salt. Oh yeah, it's light and fresh and earthy and um, good. <laughs> Slap this guy on sandwiches, wraps, Really, those are the two main options. You can refrigerate this stuff for like four days or something. So boom, you got some meal prep game going. Okay, now the dark meat. Yo, what's up? It's the dark meat coming in. First, I like to give it a rough chop. And now whenever I need a quick meal, I could just...
Yeah, I made this in about five minutes. It also tastes good, which is important. Or you can use it for more complex dishes. For example, a delicious chicken mushroom stew. So we just want to get some color on them, then remove them. Because now we'll go in with our, what is this? Oh yeah, carrot and onion. Some salt. Okay, I'll now add my chicken. My mushrooms can go back in as well. Some more salt, some smoked paprika. Oh, that's quite a lot. Touch of garlic powder. I don't know, I'm screaming. You can probably hear me just fine. You'll be able to smell the deliciousness. You made this thing. You are actively making a delicious thing. So congratulations. You have some red wine. Now is a good time to add it. I know, very fancy. We're deglazing the pan with the red wine. Now remember this chicken stock we made? That's right, we will add it to this. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe add a squeeze of lemon because it was just around. And now we just let this thing simmer for, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe. All right, welcome back. And as you can see, it's significantly reduced, but I'll show you a little trick. Take some cornstarch, add it to some water, add this thing in, and it should thicken up the whole thing. That's a good consistency right there. Now, while you weren't looking, I made some polenta. I just love this stuff. It just reminds me of my childhood. Now, let me add our stew. Oh yeah. Some parsley. Mm, that just takes me to a completely different universe. One where nothing bad exists, there's no climate change, no NFTs, just a bunch of this stew. I dripped on my shirt and I, I, don't, I don't even care. It's that good.